All right. So speaking of prequels that I brought up that but Marco gave you the definition more. of. Um, I feel like the world has like softened on George Lucas quite a bit, specifically the last couple yeah. of years. <clears throat> yeah, it's I, true. I, I, I sent you guys that Dave Filoni thing, right? You didn't send it, but I looked it up after you told me about it. Did we talk about it on the podcast? Well, that's what I was going to bring up next. Look, we're, we get it. Look at you and you and me. Um, yeah, go ahead. Keep going. I'll, I'll uh, anyway, so I feel like George Lucas was raked over the coals after the prequels. Yeah. To the point where, like, he sold to Disney. Right. He, he couldn't. What? The hell was that noise? I said garbage. Just very close to my mic. So, anyways. Anyway, keep going. To the point is, keep he could have made ahead. another three Star Wars easy. Could have gotten the funding. Not a big deal. Made even yeah. more money. And he just decided not to. Because there's a pretty right. famous quote where he talks about, why would I make something that everyone's just going to hate me for? Yeah. He's pretty much getting hated for ruining something he created from start to finish. So I think we might have talked about this before, but uh, he is Jim Morrison without the rest of the doors. So George Lucas is great when he has the right people around him, making sure that he doesn't bring in Jar Jar Binks's. Uh-huh. The problem is he didn't, he was too successful the second time around for the prequels. And he didn't have anyone saying no to him. Whereas in the first one, everyone was saying no to him. So it's the same thing when Jim Morrison wanted to do his spoken word concerts and no one was there to say no to him. He made himself look a fool. He well, didn't have the rest of the doors keeping him grounded. The, the biggest thing I heard is, uh, well, his ex-wife now, uh, his wife during the time of the original trilogy, she made a lot of decisions on scenes to cut out in the rearrangement of scenes, which made the movie way better. <clears throat> Maybe. That's her word. Uh, no, yeah. that's, that's, I didn't hear it from her. I heard it from <laughs> other people. Who'd you Who'd you hear from, Marco? Who Who was on that set? I watched a YouTube video describing it, and they were showing basically the original cut of the movie versus what she did after editing. This is gonna be what happens when Marco gets really into right wing like QAnon stuff. He's like, "Yeah, and the government is trying to incept us with microchips in our brains." I heard it on YouTube. (laughs) No, that's what uh, Elon Musk is trying to do. Neuralink. See. There you go. Did, did you hear what he said the other day? Uh, uh, probably. He was uh, he's playing uh, he's going through Cyberpunk 2077, and he said uh-huh. it uh, it kind of like uh, freaked him out a bit, realizing that that's kind of what he's doing with Neuralink to an yeah, extent. Yeah. 